In this module, we are going to be covering the topic of bond retirement. And what this essentially means is we've issued the bond, we've borrowed money, and now we are deciding to pay it off. Specifically, we're going to be talking about when we pay it off prior to the maturity date and what gains and losses we have to report and how we handle that. So this is early liquidation. We're not paying it off at maturity, we're paying it off early. So if we had that same bond and it was held by the same investor until the maturity date, then the only thing you would have at that final transaction is a debit to bonds payable to reduce it for the full face value and a credit to cash for the same amount. There would be no gain or loss recorded. Everything went as it was intended. However, when bonds are either bought back by the company or when they're bought and sold from other investors, you may have gains and losses to report. Specifically, we're talking about here when the company buys the bond back prior to maturity. So we're going to see how to record that. So first of all, we have the question, why would a company want to buy these bonds back early? Why would they want to pay them off early? They issued the bond, they borrowed money for 10 years. Why would they all of a sudden, in year six, decide to pay it back early? Now the reason for that is really the same reason as any other loan is refinanced. If you set the bond up and the market rate at the time was 10%, so that's what you set as your stated rate. In other words, you are paying 10% interest. Six years down the road, rates may change quite a bit. If the rates have fallen drastically down to, let's say, 5%, it may indeed be wise to retire the bond early, stop paying 10%, refinance it, so now you can get a bond issued for 5%. So that's really what happens with these bonds. Now one thing to note is not all bonds can be bought back early. If it's a callable bond, the company can force the, the investor to sell it back. If it's not a callable bond, the only other way to pay it off early is to go out to the open market and buy it back for whatever the current price is. But keep in mind here, if rates are currently 5% and you have a 10% bond, that bond price is probably going to be fairly high because it's a good investment right now. Today, we can only invest and get something for 5%, and now all of a sudden you've locked into a 10% bond. It's going to be a little more difficult to buy that back. So generally, we're talking about a callable bond where the company can force the sale of a bond early, the, the purchase back, the, the buyback. Now, in those situations where we have a callable bond, if you're an investor investing in a 10-year bond that was callable and it was a 10% rate or some relatively high rate, you'd be a little bit concerned once rates start dropping that, hey, you're going to lose a good investment vehicle. Of course, you'll get your money back if the bondholder or if the company decides to buy that bond back. You'll get your money back, but you've lost a good investment vehicle. Now you can go out and take your money and you can only invest it for 5%. As somewhat of a deterrent for companies doing this all the time, there's something built into the bond, these callable bonds, called a call premium. So what this is, it's a little add-on. If the company does decide to force this bondholder to sell their bond back, then the company also has to pay a call premium to the bondholder to help offset the, the fact that they're not going to have a good investment vehicle anymore. So before we get much further, we have to take a look at the concept of gain or loss. So how do we know if we have a gain or a loss? First of all, we have to understand the concept of carrying value for that to make any sense. Carrying value, as we'll see in the next slide with the amortization schedule, this is the face value of the bond plus unamortized premium, if we had a premium bond issued, or if it's a discount, it's the face value less the unamortized discount. By the time both of those things get amortized, the carrying value would equal the face value, but again, that won't happen until the final maturity date. If we're talking about somewhere in the middle of the life of the bond, this is not going to be fully amortized, so we're going to have a carrying value that differs from the face value of the bond. 
So when we're talking about a gain or a loss, we have to take a look at how much did we as a company have to pay to buy that bond back versus what is the carrying value. Keep in mind, this is the carrying value of the bond, the carrying value of debt. If we had to pay more than what that bond appeared to be worth, it's a loss. We paid more than we thought we would have to. If we have to pay less, and by, by we, I mean if we as a company have to pay less or we can pay less than the carrying value, it is a gain. It's a good thing. We paid off something that appeared to be worth 110000 We paid it off by using 105000 So that's a good deal. It's a gain. So here we have an example of an amortization schedule just to show what that carrying value really means. In a different module we talk about how to build this amortization schedule, but as you'll see in this situation, it's a 10-year bond, $100,000, it has a 10% stated rate and only an 8% effective market rate, so this is going to be a premium. This is a good bond, it has a higher interest rate than what the going rate on the market is. Now it's callable. And notice that we have a call price of 105% or a call premium of 105%. In other words, if we want to buy this bond back at any point in time, we've got to pay 5% on top of the face value to buy this bond back. We can't just buy it back by using the face value itself. It's got to be an additional 5%. So again, the carrying value in, in the very beginning, year zero, period zero, is 113420 that additional 13420 was the premium. Over time, every year, it's going to have $1,342 amortized, so the carrying value drops by that amount each year. Notice that as a premium, the carrying value until the very end is always above the face value. So this is a bit of a drastic example, but let's say at the end of year three, we decided to call the bond because the rates have dropped from 10% to 4%. Again, quite a drastic example, but now if we were to issue a new bond, we could get away with paying 4% interest instead of 10%. So this makes sense why the company may want to do this. They would take a look at all their callable bonds, and if, again, it's a, it's a call price of 105% of that face value of 100000 So that gives us a total of $105,000 that we have to pay to buy this bond back early. At that particular time, the carrying value is only $109,394 because we still have that much premium that has not yet been amortized. So that's the face value of $100,000 plus the unamortized premium of $93,94. So this essentially results in a situation where the company can pay $105,000 to buy something back that had a debt value of $109,394. This is a gain of $4,394 by buying this back early. So this is a good situation at that point. The journal entry in that situation would be a debit to bonds payable for just the face value of $100,000. We have to debit the premium because keep in mind it had a credit balance to begin with, so we have to debit it to reduce it. There's only $9,394 left. We did have to pay cash of $105,000, so we credit the cash. And as you can tell, we still need $4,394 on the credit side for the journal entry to balance. That would be our gain on bond liquidation or whatever term you want to use there. And that's really the main point of this module is to get you to this journal entry. Three of these four items you should be able to just calculate or you put the journal entry in just by understanding what's left. We know what's in the bonds payable. We knew what was in the premium. And we knew what we had to pay for cash. So the difference, whether it be a debit, which would be a loss, or a credit, which would be a gain, is going to be this 4394 to balance everything out.